Hello and welcome to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to stitch a panoramic image using Affinity Photo. So here I am inside of Affinity Photo. This is the finished and edited stitched panoramic photo. I do want to point out here that this technique does work with raw photos as well as JPEGs. However, the final result of this stitched panorama is not actually going to be a raw photo. So if you prefer to process or edit your photos as raw photos, I do recommend you do that before you stitch the photos together. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to processing raw photos inside of Affinity Photo, so definitely check that out. But you can also stitch the panoramic photos together and then edit the photos. In my opinion, this makes it easier to match all of the colors inside of your panorama image. But of course, the downside to that is you don't get to take advantage of the raw data from raw photos. But let's start off here by going to File, New Panorama. And here you'll see we have the new panorama dialog box. On the left side, we have a column called images. On the right, it says panoramas. So we're gonna add images to this left side for stitching by coming over here and clicking the add button. So here I have four photos. These are all raw photos. And I can select all of them at once by clicking on one and then shift click on the last photo here. And then come over here and click open. So now we have the four photos that we wanna use for this stitched panorama. And all I have to do is come down here and click Stitch Panorama, and that's going to stitch all these together and create a final panoramic photo over here. All right, so here is our stitched panoramic photo. I can also come over here and I can remove any of these images from the stitched panorama if I want. So let's say I didn't want as much tree over here on the right side. I can uncheck this photo here and then once again, click Stitch Panorama. And now we have a second panoramic photo on the right here. I can also come back here and just add photos from an entirely different panorama if I wanted to and perform the same thing and it would show up over here on the right side. But I'll just stick with these two for now. So if I wanted to open both of these up, I can shift click on this top panorama and that's going to select both of these. And then when I click OK, it will render both of these. However, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna click on the top one here and then come over here and click OK. So that's gonna open up this single panorama and it's going to render that panorama. So here is the result of that rendering. What it's done is it's gotten rid of the seams between the stitched photos and it's just blended everything together nicely. So the main thing you'll notice right away if I hold control and zoom in using my mouse wheel is that the edges here sort of curve inward and that reveals this sort of checkerboard background behind here which represents transparency. So that's gonna happen usually when you stitch panoramic photos together just because of the curvature of the lens and how much curvature you have here is going to depend on the type of lens you use when you took the photos as well as how many photos you stitch together. We're gonna get into how to fix this here momentarily, but first I wanna point out we have some tools on the left side here. So starting with the hand tool, that allows me to move around my image. So if I hold control, zoom in, I can just move around with this hand tool. Then we've got the zoom tool. We don't really need this because we can just use control and the mouse wheel, but you can always single click here to zoom in, alt click to zoom out. And then we have this tool over here. So this is our transform source image tool. When I click on this, it's going to select individual images and you'll also see when we do that, you can see some of the seams here now. So you can ignore that because those seams aren't really in the final product. But this allows us to select individual photos inside of the stitch panorama. And we can either tweak the positions of these using the little transform handles, which I'm not gonna do here. Or we can select an image and we can refine the mask for that particular image. So for example, let's click on this image here and then I can come over here and use either of these tools. So add to source image mask or erase from source image mask. Just a quick note, Affinity Photo does automatically provide some masking between the photos and it does a really good job usually. So you don't usually need these tools unless there is a particular object that gets masked out or in the rare case, maybe Affinity Photo messed up inside of the masking process. But let me just demonstrate real quick. Let me grab this tool here, the add to source image mask tool. So you can see on this particular photo, this is the only area that Affinity Photo really kept. Let's say for whatever reason, we wanted more of this rock to be kept. I can paint using this tool and that's gonna bring in more of this rock. 
If I were to come over here and click render, it would automatically render this back into the stitched panorama. So this element would now be included in here. Let's say I wanted to get rid of this area I just manually painted in. I can come over here to the eraser tool, so erase from source image. And you can see here the area I just manually painted in. So now when I paint back over this, it's going to erase that. And I can either grab a new tool or click the render button and that's going to render our changes. So again, I don't usually recommend you manually paint the layer mask unless there really is a terrible mistake made by Affinity Photo. But let's come over here and grab the crop tool for the next step. So the crop tool allows you to crop your image and this is a very easy way to crop out the little transparent areas here. So the quickest way to do that is just to come over here and click crop to opaque. So that's going to move the crop inwards exactly to where the transparent areas stop. That way you don't have to manually do it. And then if you wanted to apply this crop, just hit the enter key on your keyboard. And now we have a nice crop there. Let me hit control Z though, because I do want to demonstrate a couple of other features. So let's click off the crop tool onto the hand tool and then back to the crop tool. So of course you can manually drag the crop area in using your mouse. So let's say for whatever reason, I wanted to keep some of the transparent area here. Let's drag this inwards a bit, as well as this side here. So we've got some transparent area showing in some of the corners. That's okay, there is a way to fix that. But I can also rotate my crop using this button here, or I can come over to the straighten feature, and this allows me to draw using this little ruler tool along a horizon. So for example, let's say I wanted to straighten based on this horizon here where the mountains start. So maybe about right there. I'll release my mouse and that will automatically straighten the photo out. Crop to bounds is just gonna move your crop area back to the outer bounds of the canvas area. So we're not gonna click that. And you could change the grids inside of the crop area. Right now they're set to the thirds grid. You've got golden spiral here as well as diagonals. So let's keep this set to thirds grid. The darken checkbox is just to darken the area outside the crop tool. So now let's double click inside of here or hit the enter key. So now we've got this cropped panoramic photo with the edges exposed. The way you fix that is just come over to here and make sure this little icon, the in paint missing areas icon is enabled. And now when we apply the panorama, that's going to automatically in paint those transparent areas and it does it in a smart way so that it does look pretty realistic. So let's apply all of our changes to this panorama by coming over here and clicking apply. So a couple of things have happened here. The panoramic photo is now opened up inside of our photo persona so we can edit this. Also, you'll notice the corners of the image were automatically in painted using that feature. If I hold control zoom in, you can see this corner didn't really do a great job. So we could probably clean that up using something like the heel tool or the patch tool. But if I come over here, you'll see this corner did a pretty good job, looks pretty realistic. So as I mentioned, the final panoramic photo is not actually a raw photo. It is going to be a JPEG, I believe. However, you can still edit this inside of the develop persona despite it not actually being a raw photo, which is what I prefer to do. Or of course, you can edit this inside of the photo persona. So I'm not going to go through all the settings here, but I will just quickly edit this. All right, so here you'll see I did a quick editing job. Once I am ready, I can come over here and click develop. And I can always add some effects now that I'm back inside of the photo persona here. And what I like to do, for example, is come over here and add a vignette. And I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the vignette tool, but I'll just turn the exposure down a bit. So make some adjustments there and we can exit out of here. And finally, once you are ready to export this, you can go to File, Export. And you can export this to a variety of different file types. I recommend going with a TIFF file if you want to preserve the image. Otherwise, you can go with the JPEG if you want to go with a smaller file size. And I'll come over here and click Export. And we can, of course, name this. And hit the Enter key. And you can go to File, Save if you want to save this as an Affinity Photo file. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like this video. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.